Hello. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. It's time for another online engagement. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our peak webinar series. I am Roel Paras, the Training and Development Officer of De La Salle University Das Marinas. And together, I am with Ms. Gra uh, Dr. Graciela Mejia and will be your host for today's online learning session. Before we start our program, here are the rules that we have to observe during the online engagement. Please give me a moment. I would like to share, like to share my presentation. All right, so once again, welcome to our PEEP online engagement. And here are the rules and reminders that we need to follow during the webinar. This webinar is recorded. The use of Q&A chat I will be observed to ask questions. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using this link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in the LSUD's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources and get your e-certificate. You will receive an email that contains your username and the password. You only need to register once for the entire webinar, webinar series. Now to get your certificate, Watch out for the access code that will be given before the end of the webinar. Log into this website, go to sources, to courses, click enroll, input the access code. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. By the way, here are some tips for our attendees who are encountering audio problems. Kindly check your device audio if it is turned on. If you're using earphones, headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection, restart your internet and or your device if you did. Exit the event and rejoin again. Check if audio is working on the other apps. If you're not using the MS Team apps, we suggest you download and use it to participate in the webinar. If using laptop, go to your MS Teams profile, settings, devices, and select the appropriate audio device speaker. To formally start today's webinar, let us have our opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jen Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Once again, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our webinar entitled Online Enabling Assessment. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. Let us move on to our program and at this point to give us his opening message, let us welcome the Dean of the College of Education and the Co-Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, Dr. Paterno Alcantado. Dr. Pat, good afternoon. Maraming salamat, Sir Ruel. Sir Ruel, uh, am I loud and clear? Yes, sir, we can hear okay, you. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Sa mga taga Norte, Pada kay Lucano, at Naimbag ang Malemyo Amin. Sa mga Cebuano, sa South, maayong hapon po. Kumusta na po kayo? Tayo po ay nasa panglimang webinar series na sa ngayong hapon na ito. Sana po tayo ay natututo sa ating mga webinar at alam po natin mag isang taon na po tayo na naka-online learning. So kailangan po na patuloy ang ating mga uh, training kagaya po ng webinar na ito po. The De La Salle University Das Marinas adopts the caring for what matters in this very challenging time of pandemic. All academic institutions have done a lot of adjustments, trainings, and delight to respond to online learning so that learning continues. It is in this premise that DLSUD continues to help enhance its faculty members to deliver quality education and nurture sustainable mindsets. 
The LSUD is committed to help faculty members of other higher education institutions, thus the capacity building of teachers to help enhance the preparation towards effective online learning is being conducted. We are now in webinar series five. The focus of our discussion is online enabling assessments. As part of the learning process, enabling assessments are very important to assist the students to gain the course learning outcomes. Since we are on online learning, there's a lot of adjustments in the enabling assessments. We invited a very competent speaker to share to us his expertise and experiences on online enabling assessments. I hope and pray that we may be able to learn from this webinar and we will be more effective in online teaching. So let us sit back and relax and I would like to welcome you to webinar series five on online learning assessments. Maraming salamat po, Jos Tiagina. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Sir Well. Thank you very much, Dr. Pat. Marami pong salamat. So at this point, please um, allow me to present the objectives and later on we'll acknowledge our participants. Our objectives for today's webinar is to connect how enabling assessment determines the success of blended online learning, to develop a valid and reliable enabling assessment mechanism, and plan different types of enabling formative assessments. So at this point, please allow me to acknowledge our participating schools as I call on the names of the schools. All right, so we have the following, Avra State Institute of Science and Technology, Asian International Institute for Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Arnold Jensen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Batangas State University, Pulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School, Kalamba Doctor College, Capi State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, Coleo de Montenlupa, Coleo San Agustin, the Cup of Wisdom Academy, De La Salle College of St. Benilde, De La Salle Ipa, De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, De La Salle University das Marinas, Divine World College of Ordaneta, DMMC IHS, Institute of Health Sciences, Don Bosco Technical College, Mandaluyong, Pilamor Christian University, La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic College, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, Madalag National High School, Aklan, Madre Guidita, Martelli School Incorporated, Manila Adventist College, Marymount Academy of Paranaque, Marvelous State Academy of Bacoor, Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Oriental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College Recoletos de Cavite, Santa Isabel College, St. Jude College, St. Anthony de Carmele Academy Incorporated, University of Negros Occidental Recoletos Bacolod, University of Perpetual Health System Dalta Molino, University of Cordilleras, Bicol University, Isabella State University, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Open University System, Sister Mary of Banox Incorporated, Surigao del Sur State University, University of Perpetual Help, Dr. Jose Tamayo Medical University, MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy, Emilio Aguinaldo College, St. Thomas Beckett Academy, Pandan Bay Institute Incorporated, and also we would like to acknowledge our friends from the Department of Education, Capite, from the Department of Education, and from the Commission on Higher Education. At this point, just for the sake of giving the reminder once again, especially for those who just uh, joined, uh, joined in, or ito uh, po ulit ang ating reminders. This again, this webinar will be recorded. Uh, the use of Q&A chat uh, will be considered using our um, live event chat. When asked a question, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. Again, for the registration, 
we have the uh, website. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in the LSUD LMS. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources and feedback. You will receive an email that contains your username and password. You can only you only need to register once for the entire webinar series. Again, to get your certificate, later on we'll be providing a link, uh, actually the passcode, the passcode that you need to uh, use to log in in our DLSUDAs and then follow the following instructions. Again, for the tips, for those encountering audio problems, this is very important. Kindly check your device audio if it is turned on. If you're using earphones, headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection, restart your internet and or your device if needed. Exit the event and rejoin again. Check if audio is working on other application. If you're not using MS Teams application, we suggest you download and use it to participate in the webinar. If using laptop, go to your MS Teams profile, setting, devices, and select the appropriate audio or the uh, device or the speaker. All right, so I think we're now ready for our talk proper. And at this point, to introduce our resource speaker, I would like to call in uh, our uh, co-host, Dr. S uh, Grace Mejia, the department chairperson at the Tourism Management Department. Good afternoon, Ms. Grace. Good afternoon, Sir Well. Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Okay. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker this afternoon, who is going to talk to us about online enabling assessments. Our speaker, is the current director of Institute of Knowledge Management and head of School of Information and Knowledge Management at the Philippine Normal University. He is also a full-time online faculty member under the College of Flexible Learning and EPNU. He is also serving as part-time faculty in the College of Education professional um, um, education courses of the De La Salle University des Marines. He has been part of some of the projects and activities of Simeo Inotech for educational practices and massive open online courses. A resource speaker is the current national research. His um, current national research outputs are Digital Kids Asia Pacific National Research on Digital Citizenship in partnership with Southeast Asia Ministry of Education Secretariat and Department of Education as researcher and contributor. The National Report on Basic Education Exit Assessment of the Department of Education as subject writer for media and information literacy. He is also responsible for the knowledge management and continual system of the university linking and integrating processes on intellectual property, data management, knowledge assets, and architecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our resource speaker, Dr. Nino D. Nalduza. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Grace. Thank you very much for, for that introduction. Maraming salamat po to our MC today, Sir Ruel. Magandang hapon to Doc Pat and to the members of CILP. Good afternoon, everyone. To the uh, De La Salle University, the Marinas community, isang magandang hapon. The same thing to our participants today. It's quite whooping in terms of the number of schools, no? I think medyo madami-dami ang ating participants ngayon. And we're very glad that uh, you had attended, uh, able to register, attend to our uh, very timely uh, webinar on online enabling assessment. So to start, I'll be, I'm going to share to you um, the my presentation. Uh, later, the the team will 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 direct you on how you're going to have a copy of the presentation. So for now, I want you to listen and I want you to to grasp. Uh, I mean, and also to link your experiences, particularly in doing assessment in the current setup of education. All right. So let me share to you my screen. Hopefully you'll see it now. Nakita po ba natin? 
Okay naman Sir Ruel ang aking screen. Yes, po. yes, yes, yes po. Alright, thank you po Sir Ruel. Well. Alright, so for this afternoon, we'll be dealing with the online enabling assessment. So it's quite new to some of us. Uh, for those who uh, are dealing with the assessment, um, we, we have this so-called unique way of describing assessment or enabling assessment is also being termed as a formative assessment. But we will be looking at some of the important questions or essential questions for today. So these are some of those. So we'll be learning how uh, how enabling assessments were being defined or being described in the context of the open and distance education or flexible learning. Also, how can you meet your learners needs for formative assessment or for what you call an enabling assessment? Aside from that, we will also see how we make sure that the assessments are considered to be valid and reliable. Uh, and also we're going to describe two new uh, it's it's not that new, but it's it's an emerging term in assessment, most especially in dealing with distance education and dealing with flexible learning. The idea of continuous and final assessments and later on also uh, as our culminating uh, lecture or discussion will be on planning of the different types of formative and enabling assessment. I'll be showing you also later on samples of my uh, assessment work or assessment designs that I usually implement in my classes even before uh, in dealing with blended courses or blended learning modality or even a full online learning uh, modality. But I want you to go with this with with a statement here that the current setup right now in our education will heavily require our students to become more assessment focused. They always look at what is to be assessed and then base their study around those topic of interest or, or content. So meaning to say, um, more than the content of of the lesson or content of the curriculum or the course that we are develop that we are delivering to our student is that students are are really prioritizing heavily on the idea of assessment. Why? Because assessment would determine the way how they should look at the content of the course. Uh, ibig sabihin po nito, they're looking at the way learning at the the way learning on the content, the, the way they learn on the courses itself would heavily be determined by the assessment, the kind of assessment that you're implementing to your student and the way how you're going to evaluate their performance. So uh, based on the I mean, um, on the current uh, care program of the university in terms of the online learning uh, caring for what matters. So I'm going to quote this from our uh, implementing rules and guidelines in De La Salle University. Formative assessment has been defined as uh, evidences that students engage or participate. And whether it is in face-to-face -face modality or in online modality, formative assessment are considered to be very important in terms of the way we engage our students alongside with, with the learning outcomes and also with your activities, okay? So participation-wise, it will focus on discussion forums or even exercises or even tests, which which can be done uh, in a group way or it can be done individually, particularly on the lesson or the structure of the lesson that you're implementing to your student. And when we're going to describe formative assessment, the way how you deal with it contextually on, on, on our system, like in the La Salle University, it's part of the asynchronous discussion or the asynchronous structure of lesson or or the course itself the scoring may be uh it can be scored but there are what we call minimum minimum weight in terms of its grading component it's quite short because it requires them to interact with the content however we limit the idea of having or meeting them synchronously or virtually using uh, Microsoft Teams or even Zoom or even Google Google Meet. There are what we call limited attempts because we want our student to be more engaged on how they will connect or integrate their learning to the assessment. And uh, these formative or enabling assessments are considered to be as, uh, a short term assessments, no short term assessment that could support totally or that, should, that could support totally the idea of your activity being implemented in your courses. And it's also a gateway. Talking about gateway assessment, how when, when a student done with this particular task on a given lesson, they can easily move on to the next one. Because 
the idea of prerequisites or the idea of uh, the idea of um, parallel connections of the of the of the content or the topic itself or cumulative in such a way that you're going to expect your student to accomplish this before moving on to the next one. So but in, in some of the learning management systems, it can be called as what they call the path, uh, um, path activities or what we call using a badge system. No, and the term in blended learning or open learning is what they call the gateway assessment. But remember that the term enabling assessment is also considered to be as the formative assessments because we have we, we all know that there are two types of assessments. We have the formative assessment and we have the summative assessment. Generally, we this we, we, we contextualize we contextualize that at the La Salle University, the Marinas as an enabling assessment. But most of the universities uh, in the general way of 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 looking at the idea of assessment, measurement and evaluation. So we're dealing with formative assessments. Now, uh, based on uh, the definition of Morgan and O'Reilly in 1999, formative assessment are considered to be something that is being designed to motivate, it enhances understanding and provides progress indication or progress development based on the quality of the activities. Again, activities are aligned with assessment that are being aligned also to the learning outcomes. So aside from that, it takes informally. Generally in the classroom, we usually have this recitation. Um, you call that uh, small, I mean a short quizzes, no, or even activities or even group discussions. So these are informal, informal way of doing or observing your students on the on their academic performance on or in their instructional performance. And also it can be unplanned in, um, I mean, throughout in the duration of the lesson, as you implement the lesson in a usual face-to-face -face setup, usually conduct several, several unexpected assessment or even, for example, you are doing recitations in the middle of doing an activity or having a trial and error uh, in sciences, uh, activities or observations or experiment that are considered to be unplanned that could trigger motivation on the part of the student to appreciate more of the subject matter or to appreciate more the courses itself in the in the context of open and distance education or distance learning or even the flexible learning these principles are also being applied but somehow it's quite structured why why is it that structured because uh, beforehand you already determine you already created or designed the kind of of enabling assessment or the quality of formative assessment you're going to implement on your online classes or in your blended learning classes. Uh, informal in such a way that there is, I mean, it can be marked with, I mean to say it can be graded. There's some which could only support uh, a redirection or what we call springboard activity on, on the given set of lessons. That's why we can, we can also apply that in, in the context of open and online or blended learning. Uh, in in the document released by Commonwealth of Learning uh, in flexible learning or designing instructional materials, the ODL counterpart of or the open distance learning counterpart of formative assessment is considered to be designed consciously. Structurally, it's being designed. Like for example, when you create a module if it is a printed one or an offline printed module, um, the, the activities are being set there or being identified already beforehand. So uh, activities are being given to the student and they're expected to do that, whether it is recorded or not, whether it is not, it is graded or not. At the same time, in the modular base or in a topical base uh, type of, of uh, online learning, or when you're using learning management system, like for example, you have your school book, you have your uh, Moodle or even Canvas or even Blackboard. Uh, activities are being given in such a way that it supports the, the, the completion. It supports the understanding of the module itself. Like for example, if you give them what we call in-text questions or even activities or what we call self-assessment tests, like the idea of diagnostic exams, pre-tests and post-tests, or even quizzes. Now methods are considered to be having an activity and providing feedback. One of the 
integral highlights of formative assessment is providing them feedback because like for example when you ask your student to uh, to answer a specific question in the discussion forum and you want them to key in their answers or response to the question and you want also them you want them also to to comment on the on their peers or other colleagues as part of their interaction with with their classmates in an, in an asynchronous mode then feedback is very important so whenever we do an activity in a formative assessment way we always give feedback immediately okay but in summative it's quite different in summative assessment because it's considered to be as a major requirement and uh you 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 highly you give highly structured feedback there unlike in formative assessment uh in the process of learning in the process of instructional learning you're more giving feedback based on the quality of the activities or the quality of the output that they are providing you another is the self-assessment test no it's not usual for some to have self-assessment test most especially if you are uh if you if you are dealing with if you are dealing with um, pure sciences or mathematics, because we expect that in the self-assessment test uh, beforehand on the pretest, like for example, it's a self-assessment, there, there's there's a little to no prior knowledge when it comes to the new concept. It's being provided when you want your student to to have a background idea about the lesson, yet uh, you're dealing with a new lesson. So we expect our students not to have that that level of understanding or level of comprehension to that idea. That's why we expect that self-assessment tests are considered to be reflective on its on its nature. It can be it can be multiple choice type. It can be an essay type. It depends on the way how you design the course. Another one is a non-accessible tutor mark assignments. Um, there, you're giving assignment to your student at some point. It's not accessible, meaning to say not all assessment mechanisms are considered to be graded. There are assessments that could only support your discussion. <laughs> There are activities that can only support your discussion, but not all of them are being graded or being marked. That's one a good point in doing with assessment because it's quite it's formative in nature. And like if it's sub summative, so you need to put equivalent points there and you need to come up with a good way of incorporating that to to have a balance in terms of the delivery of the content at the same time, the time being spent for them to accomplish the summative assessment. And comments from peers in a group is very in a group work when you ask your student in as in an asynchronous modality, online asynchronous to have group work. So it's very important for you uh, to assess or even to give feedback and the students to provide also comments on their peers in terms of the output of the group work itself. Now dealing with we always go back to discussion on the formative assessment, but we need to see how how do we really apply validity and reliability in this type of uh, assessment. Uh, looking back at the definition of validity, it refers to the extent on how you measure uh, a performance or how valid it is, what is meant being, what is what it is meant to assess or to measure with a given type of assessment method. And unfortunately, we tend to assess the practical rather than what should be assessed. That's why in we babalik tayo dun sa idea na we need to go back to the learning outcomes. Remember, in online distance learning or flexible learning, we are picking the most essential learning outcomes. Okay. Uh, learning outcomes or uh, it's considered to be vital because not all in the usual face-to-face -face setup we can discuss everything there based on the syllabus based on the lesson plan or the learning log however in an online learning modality or distance learning modality we need to come up with with strategizing what are the, the, the what are the most essential competencies or the most essential learning competencies that we can only deliver in a learning in a flexible learning or an online learning modality and like what I've said a while ago, we we look on the practicality of how do we how do we assess our student? Na idea of sige maitawid, maitawid lang natin itong discussion na ito, itong module na ito. This will be your assessment. That's it. 
practicality dahil we have limited internet resources we want our student to accomplish this at the at the most available resource that they have however we compromise now the quality of the things that we should assess based on the standards of the curriculum and the standards of the course how can we determine that based on the most essential learning competencies that you set on the given topic or in a given course or content like for example i'll be showing you some of the it's a simple outcome a simple outcome statements wherein you ask your student to describe, to explain, and to use. Okay, so if you're looking at the idea, a description falls on the lower order thinking of Bloom's taxonomy level. No, it's more on the knowledge level, remembering, understanding, explaining is more on um, application level, use will be on the, the creating or even analyzing, synthesizing. In the assessment method, the idea would be in a form of a verbal or written description of a procedure, okay? Because you're asking them to describe. And one of the most important, one, one of the good assessment method or activities is you ask them to verbal, for example, you want them to record, uh, you want them to record their answer, or even do a written explanation or in a form of a Word document format they're going to submit to you. If you're going to explain something, you may also ask them verbally and write an explanation about the activity or about the learning outcome. If you ask them to use something, then you want them to simulate. So uh, the learning outcomes determine the kind of assessment method. When you want them to use a specific procedure, for example, the procedure is letting them to to create or something, to create or create something. But you may ask your student to simulate something on a dummy or even develop something on a dummy. So that's that's how you match now the outcome together with your assessment method. Now. Another one is reliability. So it refers to the idea that if a person is assessed on more than one occasion, the outcome should be the same. So we 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 always look at the idea of what consistency here, no? Uh, learner, we we also need to consider this idea. So learner perform differently on different days. I think you may you may also consider this, and you may agree to me, no? At some point when when you give students activity on a Monday basis because they they had been experienced so so much relaxing time on the weekend and here comes Monday it's quite different when they when they perform on a Monday time compared to Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday and they're always looking forward on a Friday schedule another one is different teachers give different marks um though we have standards no uh, we, we have standards that we follow, right? For example, there are there are a limited number of assessment tasks that you we, we need to give on a given period, on a given midterm or final period. Uh, the quality of the assess summative assessment should be determined. But at the end of the day, teachers may give, okay? They may provide different marks. Uh, though we have, we, we set that on such a way that these are the expected activities or assessment assessment tasks for this course however the way you mark them would be different because it can be subjective in nature if you don't use a, a particular criteria or a rubric and it it will be more objective if you're going to use the conventional assessment methods like uh paper and pencil exam multiple choice true or false short answer and uh, short answer responses it can be differently according to the type of test use. Um, the appropriateness of the test being conducted in an online modality. Uh, how skillful the teachers are in terms of developing the exam. Uh, yeah, you're good in terms of shaping. We're good in terms of shaping the content, but how about the way we want the exam to be administered? Like for example, demonstration. Um, how, we, how can we ask our student to demonstrate something in a virtual learning environment? That's why we need to consider here some of the technological what technological aspects of or resources of the students if they can provide that. If not, then we need to resort in a more alternative way of providing our assessment. And that's why uh, consistency would be very important and the reliability of that the quality of the assessment 
would not be compromised at all. Now, I would give you some tips for validity and reliability. So it's been expected that you provide more than one assessment because in different disciplines, there are different ways on how they design their courses, on how they do their assessment. So more than one is good, but more than five is not. It, it's not good if it's a summative one. Uh, you need also to later on, we'll see how we can balance everything there. You spread the assessment out over time and use more than one assessment method. So a combination of an essay, uh, of an output based uh, uh, summative assessment or even self assessment or multiple choice depends on the nature again of the course. Now, I want to discuss to you the idea of continuous and the final assessment. So generally when dealing with continuous assessment, these are uh yeah these are the usual um enabling assessment or the formative assessment because it's it's quite developmental it's quite developmental in such a way that at the start of the course itself until the end of the course you're doing your assessments in a segment or in a fragment in a fragment units so you want based on the on the advantages of continuous assessment it's more on a reflective side consolidation of ideas it's maybe less stressful for the student because when you're about to compare that in a final assessment they're expected they are given more weights on the final assessment or the summative assessment compared to enabling assessment and the continuous assessment or formative assessment are considered to be more reliable than the final assessment because you see there the level of development, the way they understand from the topic one up to the last topic of the lesson. But somehow the disadvantage would be it requires more record keeping. The more assessment that you provide your students or enabling assessment or formative assessment, the more that you need to keep records. OK, uh, it can lead also to a fragmentation of the curriculum and over assessing the lower level. So that's why you need to check how, uh, the level of Bloom's taxonomy or Bloom's objectives of learning in, in accordance with continuous assessment. For the final assessment, uh, it can be relaxed more while taking their course because they're expected that to accomplish in one shot because it's a final requirement of the course. And students have time to reflect and consolidate their materials before being assessed. Based on the experiences that they have from the topic one to the first week of the class up to the week 18, week 17 of the class. Assessment is a whole course rather than topic based. So the totality is being given in a final assessment that covers everything. OK, from topic one, first topic up to the last topic. Yet it is simpler to organize because you're expected you're, you're expecting your student to come up with a certain output that covers up everything. It can be stressful because uh, final assessment is a summative assessment in, in nature and that gives a bigger weight on their performance or grades. And one assessment is a less reliable measure of learning than several assessments. Now let's talk about planning assessment types. So dealing with uh, assessment types here, uh, I could share to you two import, I mean two examples of assessment types, which are the self assessment test and a tutor marked assessment. Uh, let's start first with the self assessment test. So generally, um, it's it's the nature is some it's summative, but the focus is more on a topical level or a unit level of providing feedback on the activity of the student per unit or per topic being assigned or per uh, learning outcomes if you're going to look at the learning outcomes or the topic learning outcomes. It also helps your student identify errors and misunderstanding that they may have uh, before I mean right after the discussion. For example, if the teacher provided a pre-recorded discussion of the topic being supported with uh, with a, what do you call that with a learning material or, or with a lecture guide. OK, and you provide them an assessment that would clarify and would reflect if they really learn something about the content, even though even though you are not doing synchronous discussions. OK, now you provide your student with ad with advice on additional study to deal with those errors. Okay. It's somewhere on a remedial way uh, once you have the self-assessment test. The format can be, it takes time, I mean, it takes the minimum amount of time necessary to give the learners a clear picture of their progress. 
and test as much as the content of the section as possible. So it doesn't really need to be long. Um, a self-assessment test can provide for, can be done or can be accomplished for about five to 10 minutes if you are dealing with a three hour discussion or three hour unit of uh, an asynchronous and synch and synchronous discussion for a week. For example, it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes of their time. So it depends on the topic level, on the topic, and then the amount of the content being discussed on a given week or even a combination of two or three weeks in a given topic. Uh, reasonable length is being considered here and the use of questions that are considered to be diagnostic in the in character. So you are doing what you call that clarification or you are checking if there's a problem, checking if there's a need for providing another set of activities before you proceed to the next level or to the next topic of the course itself. You provide feedback again. I am always emphasizing the idea of feedback here because um, in, in an asynchronous learning, okay, there's no means for clarification face to face in the personally to your to the to the students. No, why is it? Why, why is this the, the wrong answer? Why? Why do we consider this as the correct one? Uh, that's why feedback is very important right after when you when you're about to design the self assessment. Uh, there are what we call uh, expected responses, okay, that you may uh, incorporate on the design of assessment before you ask them to accomplish it afterwards. Like for example, um, in certain in in our school book, no, when you design your multiple choice exam, you click there the answer. I mean the option of the answer. If you're the one who designs the process of designing, then you provide their feedback. Why is it co the correct answer and why is it not the answer? It's 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 quite um heavy in terms of your designing time but it it clarifies it clarifies and would suffice the level of understanding on the on the part of a student in terms of of doing their assessment and the way of pro providing feedback will lessen your synchronous discussion meaning to say there are some teachers who may do more on the assessment on the asynchronous uh, asynchronous learning and put less on the synchronous one like what I'm doing. I'm doing more of the assessment of the asynchronous one, asynchronous learning, asynchronous assessment, pero may konti ang pinuput ka na oras asynchronous. Most of the time when I do synchronous uh, discussions, I do clarifications or I, I would be asking my students to come up with a question okay, if there are needs to clarify about the lesson. But you can easily design a course for a week in a pure asynchronous lang, depending kasi yun sa nature ng course, no? Kapag ang nature ng course kasi ay heavily relied on lecture, like in mathematics, you're going to discuss calculus, and somehow it, eh, eh, yeah, it really requires you to do a pre-recorded discussion or do a synchronous discussion. Like in IT or information technology, programming fundamentals, uh, multimedia designing, production, video production, so on and so forth. It requires you to, um, to put ample time in discussion. But if we're dealing with social sciences or humanities, that would require the student to be more socially in terms, of their assess, in terms of their understanding of the course. So you could put more of the asynchronous than have less time for synchronous discussion. So it depends on the way you design the activities and the assessment methods there. Let's talk about the self-assessment setting time. So for example, in a two hour unit of learning, you could have at least, uh, the maximum would be 15 minutes of self-assessment, okay? But in a 10 hour unit of learning, it's 45 minutes. Why, and, sir, ano yung structure ng 10 hour? Like for example, uh, yung isang topic mo na good for three weeks ay equivalent to 10 hours. So ibig sabihin, you could allot about 45 minutes of self-assessment there. So depende yung kung paano nyo siya i-design. Okay. Now in terms of writing, medyo balik, I mean, uh, baliktad yung approach natin dito because you always start with the idea for the question and you are expecting, you are expected to come up with the answer right away. Uh, ibig sabihin, ano ba ang gusto mo maging takbo ng questions sa assessment, self-assessment? And you come up with, you have already on your idea the expected answer. Then from that, 
you come up now with a question, writing a question about the given self-assessment. Then write out the common mistakes you expect students to make and write the feedback to those common mistakes. OK, now uh, these are some of the examples of the self-assessment test. Like for example, if it's a multiple choice, no, in mathematics, I think this one uh, it's a multiple choice. There's an options and you provide them feedback. Now, in terms of feedback, the correct answer is letter C, but look at the items of letter A, B and D. So kapag kinilik ng bata yung A, like kapag sinabit niya yun, for example, automatic merong lalabas based dun sa pagkakadesign ng kanyang learning management system, kung ano yung, uh, bakit, bakit ito yung, bakit hindi ito yung tamang sagot. So there's always a feedback. So that's what we call uh, a pre-response feedback. Okay, predetermined feedback, I mean, na pwede nyo i-design on your learning management system, whether it is a school book, in Moodle, or even, um, or even in a printed modality, pwede din naman siya or an offline mode. Okay, another self-test taken from physical science classes would be this one. Uh, you are expected then to accomplish this, okay, in a short span of time. It would take about 15 minutes, I think. Okay, this type of physical science exam would lead to student to have already the background knowledge or a prior knowledge about the idea or the exam being implemented or the lesson being administered by the teacher in an online modality. A self-mark activity is this. Okay, when we're talking about self-mark, there are some cases na sa mga activities na ito, uh, you, you, you already provide key to corrections afterwards because these are points of clarification to the lesson if they had attended and understood the lesson well. So these are what they call self-mark activity. Self -mark activity. So um, the question here is, Sir, kay, kailangan ba na graded ang mga ito? Not necessary, no? Again, you always look at the nature of the content of the course and the set of competencies. If there's a need for this to be graded, pwede naman. Pwede naman siyang hindi graded or just to support the learning of the student uh, to understand uh, the nature of the course itself. Okay? Now, let's talk about choosing an appropriate test format. Um, in a self-assessment test format in the knowledge level, uh, the reference would be the Bloom's taxonomy, the old form, no? the old Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive domain. So these are the, the recommended uh, self-assessment format in knowledge level for comprehension. Almost the same with the knowledge level, no? but you can also provide essay as a teacher mark assessment for this. For application, so again, a short answer or fill in the blanks if they want to create or do something or actual application of a practical method is being required. And for analysis, Again, uh, kapag tumataas ang level ng, 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 ano, ng cognitive domain, hindi naman ibig sabihin no, na inanagret natin ang, ang conventional type of assessment kasi it's, it's the way how you create or develop the test items that will address a certain category or level of cognitive domain. Like for example, if it is an evaluation in, in, in the evaluation category, you can also come up with a multiple choice type of of self-assessment. So it's not it's not evident na lagi dapat kapag synthesis or evaluation ay uh, output based. So nakadepend ito sa the way you design the exam itself, okay? Now in synthesis and evaluation, so pansin niyo mabuti no, I highlighted here uh, for synthesis the essay outline, report outline and a project outline. But you can also provide a teacher mark assessment as an essay, report, or a project. Uh, in this case, multiple. You can also provide evaluation as a multiple choice. So, an essay outline would do, or you come up with with the method suitable for teacher mark assessment in the form of an essay, a report, or a project. Now, I have used some common questions to deal with this type of modality. No, um, how many assessments do we need to come up in a formative one? So again, my recommendation is to have more than one assessment. And again, having too many assessment is a burden to our student. Kaya uh, there's always a balance, no? In uh, my recommendation, kasi usually for a week, in a week discussion ko, one assessment lang. So may mga times na in two, for two week duration ng aking lesson, 
one assessment lang siya kasi yun yung nire-require ng mismo course. Okay? So, you just need to provide or choose a sensible balance for this. So, wala naman tayong limit sa paggamit ng napakaraming assessment. But be sure that our students would be able to accomplish at a given span of time. Remember, in a three-hour lesson or three-hour unit class for a week, their activity should only be accomplished within three hours. Nothing more, nothing less. That's why for with the in the inclusion of the prescribed time schedule. Kaya lagi natin sinasabi, di ba, kung ang klase ng bata ay 7 o'clock to 8.30 in the morning, twice a week, um, you provided one assessment there. So be sure that, one, that, that, that the assessment can be done in a span of about 15 to 30 minutes. For example, in a, for about 7 to 7.30 in the morning, if, you provide, if you're going to provide them more assessments or many assessments, be sure that it's always being balanced on the number of hours they render to accomplish or to, to deal with the course itself. Okay. Now, what are the types of the assessment? Or what types of assessment should we consider? So we should determine by the learning outcomes that we need to assess. How long will be allowed the learners to do the assessment? So again, as I mentioned a while ago, it then it assessments need to be long enough to provide a valid assessment of what the learner have learned on the, have learned on the lesson. So how long will it take for you to mark or to grade the assessment again the the marking time will depend on will depend on the support learning management system or marking system that is embedded on it because like for example in a multiple choice like in school book uh, in, in our school book or learning platform na meron kayo dapat kaya na niya mag-generate ng results agad-agad para hindi kayo mahirapan mag-check ng napakaraming assessments. Meron ako na-encounter ng mga teachers din in some of my talks na kapag daw sila ay nag-check o nag assess ng kanilang uh, nag assess ng mga output sa mga bata, piniprint nila isa-isa, dinadownload nila isa-isa yung mga files. And one, one reason was dami-dami kasi nila magbigay ng assessment. So, ibig sabi, ang dami-dami nilang chinachikan in a day. I mean, na, halos tumambak na at kailangan nakatutok sila sa kanilang laptop every now and then or sa kanilang gadgets. So, do the assessment cover course aim and outcome? So, I would lead you to these categories uh, in terms of spread of studying time based on the Bloom's taxonomy level. Kapag knowledge level, I mean to say in a given course, no, na 3 hour ang kanyang duration. So, dapat 20% lang nun ang pwede nating i-spread for the student to learn about, about that level. Or for example, uh, 20 minutes. Study time lang yun. But when it comes to assessment time, so the ideal would be this one. 20% uh, on the knowledge level, it's the ideal, no? But again, Sir, why my why meron actual? So the ideal and the actual can can be differentiated in such a way that not all of the assessment tasks that we put on a given course would always be implemented. Ibig sabihin, the actual the actual the actual means of providing them would would always come up with a certain level on the accessibility of the student and to come up with an output in a particular span of time. So, kaya nagbabago ang ideal percentage ng assessment time compared with the actual. So, this is just a recommendation, no? Pero kasi, again, you always go back to the nature of the course and how you're going to design it. Now, another one is a tutor mark assessment, wherein the focus is more on uh, the idea of providing comments Okay, on the answer of our student, just like you are a facilitator or a tutor to your student self, wherein it can be marked, it can also be not marked, or it can be can be assessed uh, at some point. And these are just simple outputs or simple activity outputs of the student that you could easily provide answers afterwards. No. Now, what are the purposes of the tutor mark as assignments specifically? So. You want your student to identify the most important parts of the course and helping them to see the standard of work expected for them in a course, no? if it's being marked formatively. 
Libawa, uh, the, the, the course is speaking of literature. And the main summative assessment of that would be conducting what? A demonstration teaching and submit a lesson plan on the topic related to literature. But prior to that, the formative assessment, what are the developmental assessment or developmental enabling assessments you could provide to your student as they come up with the final output or the summative assessment, which are the lesson plan and the demonstration teaching. Okay, provide an opportunity for, for tutor learner dialogue. Okay, so it can support by the synchronous, synchronous sessions. Provide detailed and personalized feedback to our students and help them relate what they are learning in their own situation. So contextual, contextualized ba based learning or context based learning would be applicable for this one. Helping pace le pacing help pace learners through the through the course itself. So there's something called monitoring or providing them path for example, before accomplishing one lesson to another or one topic to another, provided them certain badges or certain additional points or bonus uh, in their final uh, grade or in their um, cumulative grades. Now, I'll be sharing on, on my last presentation, on my last discussion, I'll be sharing to you some of the activities that I usually give to my students. So this is an activity, uh, an informative activity about, about, um, uh, educational management or my students need to provide a blog okay in more no more than 250 words about the first article that they had that they need to read an article is a form of um, a research abstract or a newspaper article so I usually do that in my classes so nagbibigay ako ng research articles or abstract and they need to read it to come up with a certain blog that is not more than 250 words so there are specific what instructions that I that I want them to accomplish. No, if you are going to to look at at the way how this has been designed, it's quite personal. Why? Because I'm using the first person perspective. Like for example, um, what to write? Your blog or output can be any of the following. So what not to write? Please don't write about what you learn. Or, or what you learn about or enumerating topics or content. I, I already know that. I am interested in what you are thinking. Then at the end of it, it's personalized also by putting a happy writing. Now in teaching professions class, so it's also a formative, a formative assessment wherein I ask them, since we discussed the Magna Carta PD 106, it's more on professionalization of the teaching profession in the Philippines. Batas Pamansa Bilang 232 is more on teaching profession. No? We discussed that in a synchronous in a synchronous mode two week, in the two weeks time, but I want them to provide me insights okay, about those discussed topics. So here are some of the questions that I asked them to accomplish. Um, what are the problems, issues and challenges? you is you i mean you encounter at this at, at this time of pandemic how did they resolve the problem or issue and challenges if you were on their shoes what will you do to solve the problem issues or challenge and what advice will you give them based on the related law and statutes and statute and statutes for professional teachers so i have a specific uh, reminder here that you may submit your answer in a comment or reply section in in a bullet or paragraph form. You may have the option to answer the activity per question or response or make it as a whole. You can also attach a, docu attach a document containing your answers, but be sure that um, it can be viewed, set to be viewed when you are about to um, submit it. Then I asked them to come up with an infographic, a timeline infographic. I provided them with um, with a rubric here. It's very important when you ask them to, to come up with an output in the synthesis mode, in an evaluation mode, you want them to apply something, sign with something, develop something. You need to provide them a good rubric for that. OK, now um, also a case study, a simple case study analysis of a situation of a teacher like here. No? Sabi ko dito, read the case and identify the laws that might help you in solving the identified problem. Then write your reflection on the case presented below. So 
that's the case, then my note talk also about this is a discussion assessment. Everyone is expected to share their inputs and comment to some of your colleagues' responses. So, ano ibig sabihin niya? So, nag-comment sila dun sa activity na case study namin, then they need also to comment some to if they agree or not with the answer or responses of their colleagues to come up also with, with a good interaction, whether even if it is asynchronous in terms of nature. Yeah, and so usually I ask them to create blogs in my other platforms here. I am using, the, by the way, the one that I presented a while ago using the DLS school book. Now I am using with my other classes at PNU. So I'm using this one use with Moodle. Okay, we're using Moodle here. So again, mahilig ako magpagawa talaga ng blogs, blogs kasi it's more on reflection kasi ang, ang nature ng aking mga hinahandle na course, no? And these are some of the outputs of my students. Actually, isang student lang ito na ginawa niya sa tatlong magkakaibang blog because I asked them to come up with five blogs, okay, in five different topics uh, ng aming course. So that's a good uh, output of our students. You can provide them blogs for that. And I'll be showing you some of the things that I designed, no? When it comes to formative assessment. Uh, this is a sample of a lesson. I think the the, top, the course title is Integrated Approaches and Technology in Science Teaching. So in the duration of the course, based on the syllabus, I have four important topics, okay? And there's a discussion on lesson preparation. On the, if you look at the upper left side, uh, development of micro teaching material and look at the uh, lower left, that's my course requirements. So in 100 points, I'm expected them sa buong duration ng course ha, na i-accomplish yung nila yung assessment to assignment 1 at ang assignment 2. Because the subject is more on teaching science teaching, so I expected them to come up with a lesson plan and a recorded video of final demonstration teaching. So what these are, the, these two assignments are simply the summative assessment. Sir, saan pumapasok ang iyong formative assessment? So, nandun siya sa taas, which are the reflected blogs. So, sir, yan lang ang iyong assessment, ang formative assessment mo. Yeah, that's it. That's my way of, of doing my assessment. But again, uh, you always ensure that the assessment would reflect the, the expected output of the student based on the learning outcome. If you will look on the right side, so from week 1 to 12, so I have dates here on the second column, and I have here the expected topic, then the activities, so expected for week number 2, they will be doing the blog 1 based on the content topic number 1 and 2. Blog number 2 for topic number 3, that's for 3 weeks. Okay, week number three, four, I know, four weeks. Week number three, four, five, and six. Blog number three, that's good for topic number four, week number seven and eight. And the two assignments, uh, the summative exam of summative one, expected that they are about to accomplish that at weeks number nine and ten. Then 11 and 12 would be on assignment number two. So, sir, predetermined na ba ang iyong assessment beforehand? Yes, this is predetermined already because you are dealing with online learning, distance learning. Mahirap kasi when you give them, when you give them out activity, an activity na, na ongoing nangyayari yung term. Uh, kaya beforehand, kailangan well, ex, well extracted na, well determined kung anong expected outputs, expected assessment task na mga bata because you are setting them that, ah, okay, for this week, this will be my task and I need to submit that for this day. So, and and if there are some adjustments when it comes to submission, then I'll be having my, my uh, no, I'll be having my adjustment as faculty and do and be more flexible in such a way the student will be able to accomplish their task on time. Aside from that, this is another one. This is my course in my subject for an MA class. The subject is uh, technology, uh, sorry, teaching, learning, and collaboration through educational technology. So dito, if you notice, I, I designed the, the, the content with seven topics, seven major topics, and I have here four important course requirements. So I have here faculty mark activity one, two, and three. 
I asked them to provide a position paper. I asked them to come up with a multimedia creative output and a case study analysis. And I want them to come up with a blog. So again, mahilig talaga ako sa blog. Pero again, you can hindi ito heavily relied on blogs lang ha. So marami kayong pwedeng gawing activities aside from blog na pwede nyong ma-design sa inyong course. Then if you will look at the right side, so ganito ko siya. Uh, the design no for 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 this week they come up with lesson number with blog number one and we tackle the first topic uh, the first topic the topic number one so that's good for two weeks then blog number two at habang ginagawa ang blog number two nagsimula na ang paggawa ng position paper with week numbers four and five discussion so ganun natin siya din ano ano ang maganda dito what's the advantage of this is we limit ourselves to provide additional activities that would frustrate our students no, in dealing with the course. I mean, if it, it if it's not that heavy in terms of if it's not really changing the nature of the grading component and the requirement of the course, then it will be OK. But in a form of formative assessment, like for example, you want the, uh, the blog number one, gusto niyo maglagay ng multiple choice exam objective, pero not graded. So possible naman yun. Magpapagawa kayo ng reflection journal, pwede din naman. So again, you always look, kasi ito ay three weeks, no? For example, from weeks number two, three, and four, you, you want them to provide or submit blog number one and two. Okay? Pero kailangan din nila mag-submit ng reflective journal, for example, or come up with an activity using an activity sheet. So, wala namang problema. Uh, as long as it is enough to valid, to become valid in terms of the content or the expected competencies of the course itself. Okay. So, those are some of the things that uh, I would share to you uh, when it comes to formative assessment. And... Um, it's really more on designing uh, prior prior to the implementation of the course and it's very important kasi like for example nagkaroon ng suspension ng classes nagkaroon ng self care week for example may schedule ng mga summative exam enabling enabling assessment uh, schedule so itong itong recommended na course timeline ay kaya niya mag-adjust ah, okay so for example since ang ating Sabi natin sa klase, class since January 21-27 will be our uh, self-care week. So, you since based on the nature of the course, so you need to accomplish blog one. So, let's suspend muna the submission. No, I want you to focus on your personal time. Then, you can submit naman that right after. Pwedeng sabayin nyo na siya ng ating blog number two. So, may mga ganun tayong level ng adaptations and flexibility that we could apply to our student afterwards. Uh, to guide you with the references of the course, uh, it came from Commonwealth of Learning, and uh, uh, with the I mean with the IRR of the LSUD on the Care Centered Model for Learning. So with that, uh, maraming maraming salamat for listening to our discussion, and uh, we're ready now for the open forum. Sir well. Thank you so much for Nino. Thank you for sharing um, a very informative presentation this afternoon. And to join us uh, for the question and answer portion, Ms. Grace, uh, the chair of the Tourism Management Department, will be our moderator. Ma'am Grace? Yes, sir. Hello, Ma'am Grace. Well. Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, so, so thank you so much, Dr. Nino uh, Naldoza. Um, Okay, so we have uh, some questions that were sent to us during the presentation. Uh, so the first question is from, um, yeah, uh, wala pong name. So moderator po yung nakalagay. So how can we determine the right duration for a quiz? Exam for example, for a 10 item multiple, multiple choice test, is 10 minutes enough? Hey. So that's the first question, Paul. So let me read the, the first question again. Uh, how can we determine the right duration for a quiz? For example, for a 10 item multiple choice test, is 10 minutes enough? Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Grace. No, um, in a 10 item question, we the, the average, in an average perspective of, of conventional assessment, we allot one minute per question. So, so one minute times ten will be ten minutes. However, 
if the question requires a student to think more because of the nature of the question is quite evaluative, synthesis in terms of nature, and will heavily require the student to, to, to put about two minute time of accomplishing the, the question for, for, for first question, we need to again revisit the learning outcome. Because um, again, the, these multiple choice exams would heavily being determined and being uh, integrated on the way how you how you come up with your learning outcomes. And it's okay to have a 10 item exam that could balance that could balance a certain topic and could promote that could promote at least one to two minutes of answering time per question. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering that question. I think Miss Grace is on a call. Uh, Miss Grace, are you? Yes. yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nino. And then we have uh, the second question. Uh, what is the ideal number of assessments for enabling and summative that should be given to students within a semester? Again, this okay. is the, the second question, uh, Dr. Nino. Um, what is the ideal number of assessments enabling and summative that should be given to students within a semester? Thank you. Um, if we're dealing with a semester, like for example, like in De La Salle, no, uh, two, two periods, the midterm and the final period, and per period we have nine weeks, no? Nine weeks per, per midterm and per final. We can, we, we, we can design the assessment, the assessment the number of assessment per week, for example, one assessment per week, one formative assessment per week, but in two weeks, you only have one assessment. So again, there's no, there's no described number of assessment, but there are what you call recommended based on the nature of the course. Like for example, in, in engineering, um, if you're dealing heavily with mathematics as the, as the major discipline of understanding the content there are lots of there are lot there are lots of problem solving activities there and the way you design that would not really getting too much of the allotted schedule so uh, the, the summative assessment could focus only with one it depends like for example what i discussed a while ago if the subject is teaching sciences for for education course the main requirement would only be demonstration teaching and a lesson plan. So that's it. Dalawa lang. Pero more than that, mayroon pa bang kaya pang sumuport na types ng assessment or number of assessment? If there's none, there's no need for you to add more. Uh, again, that's why um, you need to plan comprehensively in terms of, of your course requirements and your assessment task prior to the implementation of that in the duration of the course. Because it will help you to guide also yourself in terms of looking at a certain a certain pace of the course para hindi tayo naliligaw dun sa mismong uh, expected things or expected tasks that the student would that 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 uh, you call that accomplish on a particular week thank you for that answer doc nino and then this is our last question do you consider online enabling assessment as one of the most challenging aspects of the academic experience to navigate in an online context. Again, the third question is, do you consider assessment or, or online enabling assessments as one of the most challenging aspects of the academic experience to navigate in an online context? Thank you for the question. It's really, it's really interesting. No? My answer is yes. Um, the usual thing that we do in a formative assessment, we've been used to have that in a face-to-face -face setting, bago pa naka pandemic. And the way we design formative assessment in in the the real context of the classroom, as we have that in the online open distance learning, is really different because you need to integrate certain components of instructional designing. Meaning to say, in a face-to-face -face modality, you could do you can design and you can come up with uh, a surprise formative assessment in a face-to-face. -face. But in online, you need to come up prior. You need to design prior to the implementation of of the assess. I mean, asynchronous discussion or even synchronous discussion. There are expectations that are given already to the student, and 
uh, that's the nature of distance learning and that's the nature of an online course. Um, um, it's quite independent in terms of its nature. It's really com correspondence. For example, I think correspondence, you let your student to accomplish the task in a self-paced manner. So mean to say, if you're about to implement an asynchronous task, no need for supervision. I mean, because all of the reminders, instructions, activities are given at hand. And certain level of clarification could only be done in a, in a synchronous session, okay? Or even if you provide them feedback. That's why it's, it's really challenging. And teachers should have the idea or, or the context on how to really implement independent learning in the context of online learning because it will heavily support. And for example, kung nasanay si teacher sa face-to-face -face na every, every meeting merong recitation, in online modality, nababawasan siya. <laughs> okay? Hindi ka makakapag-conduct ng recitation habang ikaw ay nag a -synchronous. I mean, kung ubusin mo ang oras ng recitation time mo sa synchronous session naman, hindi mo nang madideliver ang lesson mo. So you need to support that with a pre-recorded discussion. Uh, you can support it with an activity. That's why designing is very important to keep to keep track on the expectations of the course, looking back at looking at the idea of the learning outcomes and align that with the assessment methods and the expected output for that course itself. Okay, maraming salamat po, uh, Dr. Nino. Um, it looks like We've covered all our questions. So, Doc Nino, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we wrap up? I thank you, Miss Gracer. Well, no. Ah, uh, siguro um a reflection lang. I mean, for to everyone, no. Uh, formative assessment is is different from uh, the formative assessment in the in the typical face-to-face -face classroom is really different from online. What we need to do as teachers is to come up with a good level with uh, with a set expectations or levels of expectations to a course and determine if the student can really accomplish that course in a given span of time okay and there's a balance in terms of, of allocating time of accomplishing a certain task okay versus the time where the students would be able to do uh, supplementary activities on the course so the, the manner of instructional designing is very important and the manner also of our caring to our student would also be important because uh, in this type of modality, we need to consider all aspects or even alternative aspects or the most adjusting aspects in order for the student to learn, to submit their output on time, to support the way they learn the subject matter. And again, they need to, I mean, and the way they become successful in completion of the course. So, maraming maraming salamat po for listening. Okay, thank you again, Dr. Nino Naldoza, for answering those questions and for the great presentation. It was a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon. So, Sir Joel, can we proceed to the awarding of Certificate of Appreciation? Yes, Ms. Grace. Okay, let me read the uh, text of uh, the certificate. On behalf of the organizing team, of course, uh, may I present the Certificate of Appreciation. So, De La Salle University Des Marinas would like to give the Certificate of Appreciation to you, Dr. Nino Naldoza, for being the resource speaker in the webinar on online enabling assessments uh, held this 10th day of February 2021 uh, via MS Teams, signed by Dr. Marco Saez, our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and Brother Gas L. Buker, FSC President and Chancellor of the LSED. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Nino Naldoza. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gray, Sir Well, to Dr. Pat, our College Dean, to the CILP team, uh, and also to the De La Salle University Des Marinas community for having me as your speaker for this uh, fruitful webinar. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. That was Dr. Nina Dosa. Salamat po for joining us this afternoon and for sharing those great insights about our topic, online enabling assessment. So once again, thank you very much to our speaker and would like to thank 
Once again, all our participating schools to the administrators, faculty members, and even staff members of the following schools, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. On behalf of De La Salle University Das Marinas, the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, we would like to thank all of you for joining us and also like to thank our technical support team um, the LSUD Center for Innovative Learning Program headed by Sir Paul Notorio and the members of the Faculty Training Engagement Committee headed by Engineer Risaldi de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology and Dr. Paterna Alcartado, Dean College of Education through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Marco Saez. Special shout out and thanks to all the people behind this webinar, to the hardworking members of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee who is working with us every time. Maraming maraming salamat po. Before we finally end our program, here are some important announcements and reminders. So once again, mark your calendar for our sixth webinar series on February 24 that is about online summative assessments. So once again, please mark your calendar for our next webinar, our next online engagement on February 24, 2021. And the topic is about online summative assessment. Now, to get your certificate, this is very important. So log into this uh, website, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. So for this webinar, our access code is IMPY-AUAK. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your uh, certificate by going to your profile. If you encounter any problems about your registration and your e-certificate, please email webinars at blsud.edu.eh. So once again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for joining us this afternoon. And that ends our, our peep online engagement. Maraming salamat po. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. Thank you everyone. See you next time. Enjoy the rest of the day.